Welcome back to the show and our discussion on the U.S. embargo of Cuba. Joining me now are two Cuban-Americans. Both were born in Cuba. One says the U.S. embargo should stay. The other says it's time to end it. We begin with Ninoska Perez Castellon. Ninoska, welcome to the show. Let Thank me, you for having me. Let me ask you, uh, you favor this embargo. You believe that it should continue. What has it achieved in the past 50 years? Well, it's not what it has achieved, but it's what needs to be done for the embargo to be lifted. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, Cuba has to respect human rights, release political prisoners, hold free and democratic elections, and it hasn't done any of that. And if we lift the embargo at this point, it would only benefit the regime's economy and not necessarily the Cuban people. But isn't the embargo uh, actually hurting the Cuban people? No, it's not, because even if the embargo were lifted, the kind of government that uh, Cuba has is the kind that controls everything. So right now, when they're talking about opening up and uh, letting uh, you know, in investors coming in, what is happening really is that the Cuban in the island can only do like a small little restaurant, maybe repair something, but the foreigner can come and build hotels and have all these great import businesses with the government. And now they're even saying that Cuban exiles who favor the regime can come and invest. So essentially, the Cuban in the island will still be a third-class citizen, even if the embargo is lifted. But when one looks at the way the world thinks, I mean, the world largely is on the side of lifting the embargo. The United Nations, of course, has denounced the embargo for 22 straight years. In 2013, there was a vote of the UN. 188 countries voted to lift the embargo. Only two opposed that. That was the United States and Israel. So are those who call for the continuation of the embargo out of step with the rest of the world? Well, uh, I'll put it this way. For 17 consecutive years, Cuba has been condemned by the United Nations Human Rights Commission for violating human rights, and nothing has been done. So the fact that all of these countries that do business with Cuba, like Spain, which is a huge investor in Cuba, or these small African countries, or maybe countries in Central America that get, uh, now they're getting their, uh, their petroleum for, from, um, uh, from Venezuela because Cuba controls it, or they're getting doctors sent by Cuba, uh, they're probably giving Cuba the vote and they have advantages to investing in Cuba, which the rest of, uh, of the Cubans in the island don't. So that doesn't say much to me. What says to me is that Cuba is a country that violates human rights, that as recently as six months ago, they were sending weapons to North Korea, and Cuba is still in the list of countries that sponsor terrorism. In the short term, I mean, we're not going to see those conditions being met, those conditions that you mentioned right at the outset, you know, a transition to democracy and improvement in human rights. So are, are people like yourself who oppose this uh, the lifting of the embargo just going to wait it out until there's radical change in Cuba? Well, no, the embargo is still there for a reason, and that is telling either the, the actual government or the new future leaders in Cuba that the conditions will have to be right for them to have business with the United States. All they want now, Spain has done all the infrastructure for the hotels in Cuba. What they want is the American tax uh, dollar, the American uh, tourists, so that their dollars will save the failed economy of a communist dictatorship. So far, the embargo should remain in power because conditions have not changed in Cuba. And it might serve as an incentive for future leaders in Cuba to say, you know what? This is not acceptable. So let's change in order to have this embargo lifted. Okay, Ninoska, thanks for your views. Ninoska Perez Castellan talking to us there from Florida. Let's turn now to Hugo Cancio, a businessman who joins us from Miami. He is firmly against the embargo. And Hugo, thanks for joining us. Tell Thank me, firstly, much. why do you believe it's time to lift the embargo? Well, it's an obsolete measure that hasn't worked. Uh, it has not served its purpose of, uh, of uh, bringing down the, uh, the existing Cuban government. Uh, it affects the people. It does not affect the government. It hasn't worked. Uh, when things don't work, they must be changed, and it's uh, it's over. It's inhumane, it is illegal, uh, and and it's it needs to go. Supporters of the embargo say that uh, Cuba needs to meet those conditions that were set down by the United States, that it transitions to democracy, and that it improves its human rights record. What do you say to them? Well. Uh, uh, 
the, see, the most important thing, it's, it's what 11.5 million people want and desired, not what the U.S. government decides or dictates over the island nation. Uh, Cuban sovereignty, Cuba's, uh, Cuba has to dictate its own uh, ways, its own uh, uh, path to the future. Uh, the Cuban people are the ones supposed to that are supposed to decide what to do with their future, what's best for them, and uh, and not uh, and, and not the United States government. I mean, this is this is uh, ob this is an obsolete measure that uh, that does not serve its purpose, uh, and 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 it it has to go. It's been too many years. It has not worked. It is time for change. Cuba is changing. Uh, uh, this is undeniable. Cuba is going into a different direction. Uh, I travel to Cuba very often. I talk to the, the people uh, on the streets of Havana, on the streets of all any city in Cuba, and some of them may or may not disagree with their current government, with their current government's policies. But they're all they all think the same way. The embargo is an obsolete measure. It's inhumane. It is illegal, and it has to go. Why do you think that successive administrations here in the United States have been unwilling to lift this embargo? You know, recent opinion polls in the United States tell us that most American people actually are in favor of lifting the embargo. Well, you know, I, I, I think, I, think uh, I, I, I have got to believe that this president, this current president, uh, uh, in his heart, he knows that the embargo uh, is an obsolete uh, measure that uh, has not worked. I believe he said it when he went out on his first presidential trip abroad. He said the embargo was put in place when he wasn't even born, that they needed to revise it, and so forth and so on. I think I want... You know, there, there's there's millions of dollars flowing. I mean, uh, coming from Washington to several anti-Castro organizations in this city. It's been like that for many, many years. What started as as a genuine desire to uh, to bring about change in Cuba, democratic change in Cuba. Uh, in 50-something years have turned into a business. It's uh, the anti-Castro movement today. It's uh, what's left. It's an industry. You mentioned President Obama. Are you disappointed that he's not been more forceful in implementing change in the relationship with Cuba? Uh, you know, he, when he came to office, you know, during the campaign, uh, he promised change. Yes, he did. Yes, it is. And uh, it's, you know, I, my disappointment don't count. Uh, we are all disappointment, disappointed. There, there's a lot of us that are extremely disappointed. Uh, uh, you know, I have people that have personally spoken to the president about this. Uh, um, I got to believe that in his heart, he understands the urgency that this policy has not worked, that U.S.-Cuba policy must be revised. And, and updated, that Cuba is changing, that the Cuban people is finding its way to prosperity through the new economic and immigration reforms, that things are changing in Cuba, and he needs to revise his policy. I have got to believe that he will do so before the end of his term. Right, but one of the things I have to say in defense of the president, uh, Hugo, is that in September of 2011, he said that the U.S. is ready for a new relationship with Cuba. But the next day, the day after he said that, Fidel Castro responded, by calling the American president stupid and saying that Cuba will change, but it will change on its own terms. Well, very bad for Fidel Castro. Uh, uh, I'm very bad. I mean, there's, there's. The, it, 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 I'm not blaming the U.S. on this whole uh, situation that we're in today. There has been a lot of mistake made on the part of the of the Cuban government. Uh, there have been a lot of injustices that have tr that's taken place throughout the past fifty something years, uh, and those needs to be revised. And I believe they are. You know, there's a new president in Cuba right now. There's there's a new president with a different vision. There's a younger generation that desires and one change, and they're pushing for it. Cuba is taking its time. Maybe it's not in the same uh, rapid or, or, or quick way that I would like to see it. I'm not the one making those decisions. I do have contact with people within the Cuban government. I express my opinion freely. I tell them what I think uh, you know, Cuba should look like. They're the one making the decisions. Uh, uh, you know, listen, the, the, the point here is it's not who is at fault. Okay, uh, which government is to blame? The important thing is that there is 11.5 million people that are in the middle in a generational war uh, that they did not uh, uh, pursue, that they are no part of. You know, the Cuban people have the right to dictate their own future. And I think one of the things that unites them all, 
regardless of the difference that they may have with the Cuban government, regardless of how they feel with the American government, one thing that unites them all is their desire to see the embargo gone. And that's undeniable. Here you go, Cancio. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you. Next, a view from Cuba. We'll hear from a former Cuban diplomat and educator. Stay with us. You're on The Heat.